you have all these alpha males in one place, someone's going to get bent. What are you filming, a-hole? The trips I take are not well thought out. Ship it out to Mexico. Oh, get to go already. It's Panda Express. Got one right there, guys. Yep, 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 on the left. Here comes Scully! Babe, we got it on this one! I'm paid to have a good hookup ratio, and Scully hooked up the first fish of the trip. I mean, you never like anybody doing your job. I don't know what to say. The back deck needs to work together, you know, and him and Scully aren't the greatest combination. That's me, NBA big man, Chris Kamen. I've never been the typical athlete. When I'm off the court, I guess I just have my own ideas of a good time. Growing up without much, we always find a way to have fun. Now that I'm a multimillionaire, not much has changed. I just have a bigger budget. Excuse me. Status is depart tomorrow morning. But but before we depart, make John wash the boat. I should tell John. John, we need to wash this boat before we leave. It's filthy. Oh. He will just have a cow. I was ready to hit the ocean. I was ready to like catch some big freaking fish. <laughs> and one of the things we were lacking um, was live bait. Chris wanted to leave at five or six in the morning. When you leave that early, the bait guys aren't out selling you the bait. What do you do when you don't have no bait for in the morning? You steal it. Rapido, rapido, rapido. Here he comes. Take this. He's got a bunch more in there. Go get more. I told John Scully to go buy bait. I do not condone those activities. I like to do a little prayer over them so the marlin, you know, go after them. Here's our macro. Oh, Hey, don't show John that. I don't like thieves among my vessel, especially off another boat in Mexico. The rules are different. They can put you away for years for that. Here comes John with our last batch. This is the last, and I cleaned him out. Had I known at the time, I probably would have sent them both home. Come to find out, it would have been a good idea anyways due to the fact they sucked. We're finally leaving Cabo St. Lucas. My goal was to catch a marlin, any kind. If I got a black, blue, if I got them both, that would be great. But I knew it was going to be a struggle. We have to get in the blue water to go find the blue marlin. They want deep water access, blue water, and above 80 degrees. We kind of had the plan. We we're going to just keep heading south, trying to find that warmer water. But we're inexperienced. We're not professional fishermen. So I hope these guys learn how to do what they're supposed to do. Otherwise, this trip's not going to be a good experience. <laughs> Either way, I gotta miss this turn. It swims so fast, it's incredible. <laughs> Bye, Those turtles are doing the nasty in front of us. That's nasty. Oh, right there, Johnny. Oh, here he comes. Okay, let your bait back now, John. Let your bait back. Just get the teeth in there. Right here, right here. Right here, get the teeth in John lost the first fish. I just thought it was funny. I need to I, I put the drag forward and I left it. Yeah, we'll see it on tape. <laughs> There's a whole other level of fishing over here. That takes a set of skills the gentleman we brought with us did not have. God, he was right there, too. I pulled up on the rod at the pressure on it, but I didn't swing. It's not a Jacob. No offense to John, but you know, big time marlin fishing, totally different game. We only got one professional on this boat, and that's Captain Mike. Uh, remember when you're striking that fish, uh, just take a deep breath. Yeah. When you go on in, you see the bite. Okay, just say it shifts off right away. Yeah. Relax. I swung on that one? Yeah, you left me on the I want a video replay. Right. Here's your, uh, get a size first fish, not a big deal. 
You guys are young, they've never done it before, but you gotta learn, right? John had one of his pitch bait, but uh, it's a whole new thing, we gotta relearn again. Anytime you let yourself get caught up in the drama of losing something, you're just putting yourself further back. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Are you gonna piss? No, it's okay. Something that we do periodically is we have an ice chipper and, and we make snowballs and we throw them at each other. Leave the ball alone, John. Leave the ball alone. Yeah, he won't come out of there for a little bit now. He's a little nervous. Oh, he, knows, no. he knows something's up. Oh, you idiot. The gyros are right here. <laughs> Bullseye, bitch. Dude, you hit me right in the junk. <laughs> Get out of yeah, here! We'll buff it out. Go back here. Go smoke from. another cigar, you <laughs> desk jockey. Yeah, that makes sense. Everybody on this boat has to one up everybody. Scully threw a can at me. It has scratched the boat, which means I have to fix it later on in the day. John was really on edge, I would say. There was a lot of amateurism on this boat. I don't even know how professional boat was run because we had so much unprofessionalism. How's your balls, Dookie? How's your nuts? Time to go start buffing that scratch. Hey, go buff those scratches out, buddy. Hey, that's that knife. Don't mess with the ball, buddy. I'm getting orders from your brother, not you. We were just trying to have a good time. It wasn't a competition. You know, it wasn't a tournament. We were just trying to have a good time. He's an emo child. John is an emo child. He's allowed to throw ice balls at us, but when we catch the ice balls and whip them back at him and hit him in the balls, that's not nice. I'll tell you what's not nice is being over emo. That's not being nice. Everybody has their opinion. Everybody wants their say. And if one of us doesn't back down, we'll argue forever. He calls us couch fishermen. Say, this is a kind food. of a couch, but we're the ones looking for the fish. And he's running around throwing ice balls. If one of the teasers go off or anything, we're screwed. He's the one who missed that last fish. I don't know what they're doing. But I guess if your brother's in the NBA, you can do whatever you want. It's not anything new. They just, I don't think they get along the greatest. I just wanted to enjoy the trip and have everybody have a good time because this is all supposed to be fun. Okay, the, the goal for today is to catch a blue marlin. The goal every day is to catch a blue marlin, you idiot. <laughs> we haven't caught one yet and we're not going to. I hope someone catches a blue so everyone shuts up about it. They're all out there chasing after fantasies that aren't there. It's not where their happiness is. I wake up with the same expectations every day that everyone's going to be disappointed. A trip like this for Caleb, it's probably the last thing he wants to do. For him, it's just like, when can I go home? If you started to fall in, would you throw the camera to me? Or would you be so dumb you would keep trying to film? Oh. Huh? Answer. Caleb just wanted to stay out of that heated zone down there with Scully and John. It's very competitive with those two down there. He actually had liked being up on top, and he actually had a really good knack at spotting those fish. He was good at it. I don't see nothing. I saw it, Taylor. Right there, I keep losing him in the sun. Look where I'm pointing. I lost them in the sun. Yeah, we just saw some sailors. Right there. Right there. They're sails. They're sails. They keep circling around this area. They're still right there. Sails are definitely a fun game fish. They're kind of like our fill-in fish. Because at the same time, we're still pulling the same teaser. Whether a big blue marlin or a sailfish come on, it's still got to present the bait to the fish, get them to eat it, and get the hook in them. Right there, John. Here he is. Here he is. Got him? I was the only one in the pit at that time. Everybody's pretty much chilling inside on the couch in the air conditioning. And whenever a fish gets on, everybody seems to relocate to the back end of the boat. Don't swing! Trying to keep tension out of each other. Don't swing! Reel it up a little bit more. Reel it up a little bit more, John. I'm doing stuff as fast as I can, bro. It was a left teaser bite. It came right up on the left teaser. We pitched it a ballyhoo. Nice job. 
All right, buddy. You ready for this? I think so. That's the way you pick it, huh, Mikey? Good job, buddy. Good job. Come on, Matt. Bring it in. Bring it in. Pump down. Okay, go down. Go down and reel. Okay. Give me a shot, dude. So go down and reel. Oh! oh. Gone. Gosh. Uh, he, he, uh, he prayed it right off. I would go with human error due to the knots tied on the fishing line by John. It's frustrating when you miss fish, and, and John tends to get a, a little amped up about it. But you just lost a fish. You want me to talk and be happy? I don't think people realize how stressful it is. I'm paid to have a good hookup ratio, and anytime you're not on your game and you screw up, the pressure is just enormous. Go down there and try it, Chris. Go down there with him, pitch with him. I'll just get in the way. They'll just be mad at me. Because those guys get so big of eagles. Oh, yeah. They do. They yeah. Like, like two bantam chickens down there. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. funny because they're up here and they listen. They go, OK, I got it, I got it, I got it. And then get the fish there, comes so the and they're like, boing. <laughs> Stop putting your mouth on it. No one else can drink out of the now. You can slap it all. I'll go buy more. Well, it is almost all out of your dozen. Nope. <laughs> And so he had a Captain Mike like circle around, and John's like, I'll get it. It's like, hello, those things happen. Just let it go. Operation has retrieval has commenced. I hope it fills with water and sticks. The only thing John gets to gap is his own stupid hat that he lost. Look. There is no way. Oh, oh, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. He can't even gap his hat. <laughs> don't, don't even talk, dude. You're the one who can't even gap his hat. It wasn't my fault. You let, because you gotta let go. I see. You're the one who should be working on the boat. Obviously. Yeah, I think Scully tries to make everything about Scully. That's it. It's stuff like this that you don't need, especially when you're stuck working with this person for a month at a time. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Oh, oh, that's it. That's the one. That's it. That's. Yeah! Wow. Ah! Now this time, put the thing on your chin. Put it on your chin, you freak. Gosh, you guys like are incompetent. Can't catch a fish, can barely gap the hat the size of Montana. Scully, you always figure out a way to blame it on somebody else, don't you? A trip like this is like, some of it's a good time, but some of it is really bad. John is John, and Chris is Chris, and Ben's Ben. You just have to learn how to deal with everybody's personalities on a trip like this. Oh, do you guys like that? Or do you like that? Huh? What do you guys like? You like that, America? I do. Huh. Okay, here's our new update, America. Um, well, um, I don't know even know what I was gonna tell you. Okay, bye. Didn't feel good when we left. Things weren't going our way, and it definitely was starting to stress me out. It just threw me off my game to a point where I was miserable. It, it gets frustrating, man, because I don't think people realize how stressful it is to screw up. My nerves were just shot. I knew I really couldn't keep it up in the back of the boat anymore. I, I went inside and I laid down. John's down in the dumps, and he can't take a dump. So he's constipated and frustrated. I'm just hoping if I get some rest for 30, 40 minutes, it'll pass. I've tried to throw up a couple times, a little bit came out. All right, just rest. Well, John's still sick. He's uh, throwing up in the bathroom. It's pretty bad, so I'm out here, man, in the back pit by myself. <laughs> he got a little sick. I don't know what it is. It could be the pressure. I don't know. 
think John's sick was John being sick of Scully. If it's something John feels strongly about and it doesn't go the way he anticipates, he gets worked up. You know what time it is? My time to shine. I was kind of excited to be back there by myself. Figured, you know, I'll come out here, take all the experience that I have, and start doing this. Let me show these guys I know what I'm doing. Scott, are you serious? Hey. We got one, dead ahead! Dead ahead, dead ahead! Right teaser, not real teaser! It's the one that puts big pitter! I got him! Okay. I'm not letting this thing go. I hooked up a Marlin. This is what we came for. Get it out! Oh, let it go, let it go, let it go. Let it go. Now reel it, reel it, reel it, reel it, reel it, reel it. 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 We couldn't see the fish coming up underneath the boat. It's just like blue everywhere. It just goes on. It's like the darkest blue you ever see. I was working it. You know, I almost had it close to the boat. And I mean, this is a monster. Careful, make sure you hit it. It will hurt you. Chris has the gaff, because we're definitely going to kill this fish. What? What? Is this serious? It's just like you're reeling in like a car, a box of bricks. And it was a tuna. Well, are we really going to be able to reel in a 600 pound marlin? <laughs> no marlin, but we had two. Still a fish. Oh my gosh. You know, I thought I was in good shape. My back hurt. My forearms hurt. Holy <laughs> frick. Got right, some tuna. One. Two. Any marlin? No, no bites. That sucked. They don't call the Marlin elusive for nothing. You have to be ready. You have to be knowing what you're doing. You can't be an amateur, and you got to be paying attention. And that's not what we had a lot of on the boat. We're in Bari Navada which I know nothing about. It was great to pull into Barra and uh, finally get on dry land. Just ride that, uh, I don't even really know how to say it, B Barra Navidad. If we look at the translation of Feliz Navidad, it would be the bar of Christmas. How far do we have to go? To I don't really know. I don't know why you ask these questions to me. The boat just tears um, yeah, you up. It, it, it does. It's, it's very difficult on your body. Your mind, it, it breaks you. It breaks your spirit. Chris and I spotted some awesome palm trees on the way in, and I thought, coconut milk. That sounds really good. Yeah. Like every six minutes, someone dies from a coconut hitting them in the head. We were not afraid of the peril. <laughs> Part of being a part of the Cayman family is being kind of an adventurer at heart. Get that board, we'll put it on the tree, I'll run up the board and jump and grab it and land. <laughs> you think we can do anything with this rope? Mike wants to go back to the times when they were younger. And Mike helps Chris just get back into like being a kid again. <laughs> we completed the mission. No danger had happened, no injuries. We brought the coconuts back to the boat, decided to cut them open. Get some of that sweet cocoa frio out of there. Everybody was concerned we we're gonna cut our fingers and hands off. Chris loses three or four fingers, or if he lobs off a thumb, he might not be able to play again. Wow, those are million dollar legs that you have a knife that you're about to stab him with. It's definitely not smart. We're like chopping on the thing, trying to get it to come off, and it took probably like 25 minutes for me to get in the first coconut. I'm thinking this is gonna be a treat. Garden. It's okay. Oh, here, try this. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good at all. It's kind of like going on an adventure that you know there's treasure at the end. 
but inside of the treasure chest was a load of crap. It was just a totally disappointing day. We got the radio and we tried to call a water taxi to come across the little inlet there and get us so we could go get something to eat. For some reason, Ben brought like these nice dress clothes. Everybody's wearing like shorts and like cut off t-shirts and like rags, basically. What is he wearing? Did you film Ben and see what he's wearing? He's ready to go to Disco Tip You gotta try to ask out another girl tonight? Is that what you're doing? We're heading to the restaurant right now where Ben is going to hand these gorgeous flowers to Corelli. Corelli. I'm just going to say, um, do you want to have dinner with me? It's good, Ben. It's good. I like the way you're thinking. Now, right now, I'm trying to get him psyched up. Psyched up. <laughs> Wow. Oh, I don't want to be too psyched up. Mexico can kind of take you over, you know, the, the romance of it. You know what I mean? No. I didn't think the situation with Corelli and him trying to date here was going to work out at all. Dude, I didn't mean motorboat like that. I'm Spanish motorboat. Brr, brr, Corelli. Um, yeah, there you go. There you go. All right. I don't even know how to approach her. I'm not very good at that. I'm going to be honest. This was just, I don't know what good is coming out of this. Is, is, what, I, is what I'm telling you. She might, she might be busy. Uh, hola. Hi. I, I got these for you. Do you? Um, uh, my nombre is uh, Benjamin. Mucho gusto. Do you speak English? Oh, OK. It's only Spanish. Um, I don't know, uh, no espanol, ni, uh, tu, uh, tu nombre? Carelli. Carelli? OK, cool. Senor? It was really brutal, just to be honest, it was brutal, like, um, because the problem was we didn't have a translator. She knows English. Sorry, man. <laughs> you know what's nice is just to, like, uh, hold someone's hand in, uh, I don't know, I thought maybe we would dance or something, you know? Um, I, I would have liked to, I would have liked to have smelled her. So. <laughs> <It's not laughs> Why did you say that? <laughs> I'm just Smell being. I, the scent of a woman, Al Pacino, right there. I just saw her in the restaurant a few times and I was attracted to her. So I thought, uh, I, I'd just like to talk to her. Um, Hi, Corelli. <laughs> I thought maybe we could get a table in the back of Poncho's and have the guys playing music, too. I don't want to eat there. It's going to work every day. Serious? She works there all day. What to eat at Crook and Poncho's, sicko. No, man. I'm That's a bad idea. <laughs> you guys are talking about her. You don't even know anything about her. Who is that in love in Cabo San Lucas? We're going to give her tortilla <laughs> soup. <laughs> oh, you stupid mother <laughs> Thanks for joining us on Exploring Cayman. See you next episode. Pretty much from here on out, we aren't gonna stop till we hit Huatulco. None of us are very experienced fishermen. They thought they were gonna give the bait to the fish and hook these things, and it's a whole nother learning curve. You can't catch a fish if you try. Every male on this ship is an alpha male. I'm telling you, something's gonna happen. Give me that camera, piss off. John panicked again. Shut up! Get him pissed! Kelly, you ready to get him? You got a picture on that camera? Oh yeah.